Hi everybody, my name is Munkle, today I'm going to be commentating over some soldier clips that I got today. And, um, yeah, I had a, I had a good I had a good little session today, actually. Um, this first clip is some MG mod, and for those of you who don't know, it's essentially a 1v1 mod where you can practice your skills, your air shots, all those characteristics of a good Team Fortress 2 player. And I've been playing quite a lot of that recently, so um, here's some footage of that. And then directly after this clip, I'm going to play some PL Barn Blitz as the soldier on defense, and I had quite a good time. It's a good map. I seem to enjoy myself every time I play. So yeah, um, lots of soldier at the moment. I apologize if you'd like to see some diversity, but um, I really enjoy playing soldier. It's probably, well, it's predominantly my favorite class at the moment, and I reckon it'll stay the same for a while. Um, I was a huge fan of the Demo Man for quite some time, but I seem to shift towards the Soldier just because it seems it seems like a better rounded class for the type of for the type of role that I play on my team. So here, this is just a little compilation of um, uh, Soldier Deathmatch, and this is a really great way to practice Soldier. I mean, rocket positioning is such a crucial part of Team Fortress, and if you're kind of serious about the soldier and you want to take it to the next level, MG mod is an excellent option. Um, in terms of MG, I actually have a video coming up quite soon with a guy called JF2P who also has a Team Fortress YouTube channel. And um, yeah, I played some MG against him with some live commentary. That will be up shortly. I'm just having some technical difficulties with the demo and such. But yeah, look forward to seeing that soon. So what has been new for me recently? Well. Not not much particularly. My um, Team Fortress 2 seems to be running pretty smoothly. Um, that is, of course, because of the Steam Pipe update, which is um, essentially a little update that um, Valve instigated for better management of the files in TF2, which was something that I felt needed to be um, put in place a while ago. But um, everything's running pretty smooth at the moment. It, um, it actually doesn't really affect FPS while you're playing but it really helps getting into servers and um, loading up the game. So it's good with people for people who don't have the most amazing processing power. And in conjunction with the TF2 update, I also um, dusted out my computer, which is something I've been meaning to do for a while. Finally got round to it, and if you guys dust your computer, you know it's kind of a tedious job. You have to get the vacuum in there a little bit, and um, some compressed air cans, which helped out a lot. If you're um, serious about PC gaming, I highly recommend that you dust out your computer every six months. That's the Munkle tip of the day, because um, after a while, my computer was really starting to take its toll, and um, that was just annoying, especially in the process of making videos and using Sony Vegas and all that jazz in the production of making videos, and all that jazz in the production of making videos and the production of jazz. And yeah, so if you're serious about PC gaming, definitely dust. It'll help you out a lot. And uh, yeah, so TF2 is running pretty smoothly at the moment. That's always a good thing. It's great. It's a great feeling to know that your game's running to the full capacity. Also, while I am on the topic of computer maintenance, if you really want to know how good your computer is running, I suggest you download a benchmark. Now, the one I use. Let me just check my desktop. The one I use is the Heaven DX11 benchmarking doohickey, and essentially what that does is it runs a 3D landscape and um, it tells you how many frames and you can change all the different graphical settings to see how well your computer really does run. And that's great to know, like, oh, is, is how's my graphics card doing, how's my CPU doing, is there anything I need to finally tune in my computer to make things run a bit smoother, so um, I highly recommend on downloading that. So the gameplay has begun, and just to reiterate, I am playing as the soldier on defense using the strange rocket launcher, the shotgun, and the vintage escape plan. And as you guys may already know, I am a very fond gunboats user, I love to rocket jump around and have that mobility on the battlefield. But today I was using the shotgun, one, because I feel like it's really great to be able to use the shotgun. And it's also great to be able to master all the different types of weapons in Team Fortress. And that's interesting because the more you understand the different weapons, the better you are at countering them. So for example, for people who haven't played Spy very much, they don't really know how the Spy goes about its business. They don't really know how to Spy check as well as others. 
and particularly if that spy is using the Dead Ringer, because that can be quite a difficult concept to grasp when you're new to the game. And I also think gunboat soldiers are kind of like spies who use the Dead Ringer. Like, it's a habit that people begin to have. Like, for example, when I started Spy, um, I wanted to unlock the Dead Ringer so bad, so I could, I could feign and I could learn to trickstab and all that stuff. But once I got the Dead Ringer and used it excessively, I kind of lost all the connections that I had with the InvisiWatch, and the InvisiWatch has more important aspects of Spy, and it probably makes you a better player altogether if you use it. So I think it's sort of the same with gunboats. What I'm trying to say here is really, just try different weapons out, it's going to help you in the long run. So let's talk about the soldier for a moment now. The soldier is the second slowest class, he has 200 health, and um, he's probably one of the easiest classes to play in Team Fortress. I think, correct me if I'm wrong here, well don't correct me if I'm wrong, this is my opinion. Um, I think Heavy is the easiest class. Um, I think it's easier, hear me out here, I think it's easier for newer players to get into the heavy, um, primarily because it has a simple mechanic. Um, you're slow, you have lots of health, and you shoot people with your minigun. There's not as much technique and stuff like that required as much. So. The soldier is quite easy, like I said. You have quite a bit of health, and the rocket launcher is fairly easy to get used to. And um, But there's a lot of ways you can utilize the rocket launcher. I feel like when I'm playing soldier, you sort of have to be conscious about what sort of shots you're going for. And there's two main different types of shots when you're using the rocket launcher, and that is direct shots and splash damage. And direct shots is when the rocket directly hits the enemy on their body, and splash damage is when it hits their feet or near the enemy and the explosive radius damages the enemy. And um, generally splash damage is the way to go, particularly if you're dealing with lots of um, enemies. But it's also really good to think about direct shots, particularly if you're in a 1v1 situation. It's good to be able to have um, Call of Duty aim, and by that I mean like being able to aim on the fly with good reaction time, because if there's if, for example, if there's a soldier jumping you on the other team, you want to be a, be able to react accordingly. You don't want to have to hesitate. And that's why it's fun to use the direct hit from time to time, because it sort of makes you conscious of getting those direct shots. And even though it has a faster speed, it has a faster rocket speed than the rocket launcher, it still kind of reminds you that, yeah, getting direct shots is pretty effective. So anyway, those are just some th simple things to think about when you're playing the soldier. Now in the gameplay here, we're holding this tro uh, choke point pretty successfully. I've got a medic, we've got a pyro, we've got a heavy, um, no engineer unfortunately. That would really help. It's really great to have an engineer building up in the in the in the roof above me. And um, this is a bit of a difficult choke point to hold. You really need to have the numbers. And if and if the enemy team really has m lots of momentum from the previous point, it can be really hard to stop them in their tracks. So, we're doing a good job here, the cart seems pretty lone. What I'm doing here is I'm just peeking in and out and just dealing splash damage where I can to see if I can find any enemies. And you'll notice through this clip, something that I really like to make an effort of is always have, well not always, but try to have full health and full ammo almost all the time. And this is important because as the soldier, you're not much with an empty clip and you're not much with the um, Blah. You're not much with uh, low health. It's very difficult for you to survive. You're not like the scout. You don't have an easy getaway. It's the same sort of thing with the spy. You can use that Invisiwatch or that Dead Ringer to save your life and um, get out of there. But with the soldier, it's a little bit more difficult, especially when you're using the shotgun. And this is why I don't use it as often, is because if you're in a very dire situation, you're in low health, say 60 health, and you're getting gunned down by a heavy, and you can't simply rocket jump away from that situation because rocket jumping with the shotgun does roughly 40 damage. I think that's off. Th oh, that's on the fly thinking right there. It does roughly that amount, so you have to be careful um, with the type of uh, with the type of situations you put yourself in. So when the enemy have taken the second point, it's really awesome to hold this bit up here. 
because as a soldier and a demo man you always want to be positioning yourself at the higher ground and this is a tremendous advantage because one you're always going to have a rocket before anyone does any damage to you and it's a lot easier to aim from above than below so you're always going to have that little bit more damage to um, rain down on the enemy and um, this is a little example of overextending and overextending is a huge it's a huge thing that I want to illustrate in everybody's mind um, a lot, lots of the good gamers on YouTube talk about it overextending is essentially when you're doing well and you're going yeah this seems pretty good um, I'm, I'm killing a few people how about I just move up a little bit further and I can see if I can kill a, a few more and um, that can work in a lot of situations I mean sometimes I just love to play like that to put yourself in a silly position and just rocket jump in and see if you can kill a few people and um, that can be really important especially if you're dealing with sentries sometimes it's great to suicide for your team to get rid of that sentry but if you're playing on defense generally there's not going to be much sentries to deal with the only uh, the only key targets you want to really get rid of are heavies and medics on the cart that's always important but um, yeah overextending is something you always want to keep an eye of for example there I was hiding in that little uh, what would you call that? That little balcony overlooking the enemy team. And I could have probably stayed there for a little bit longer if they hadn't seen me. But the issue was I only had four rockets left, so I raced, wasted three on simple splash damage, and that probably gave away my location. And I kind of had to toss up whether to stay there and hope that no one saw me or to run past the enemy as they're running towards my team and see if I can see if I can survive and that didn't really work out so yeah and of course the respawns aren't that long if you're patient you can wait for a little bit and then you'll be jumping back into the action shortly it's it's only a little bit annoying if you're having to do something really crucial for your team like if if blue's just about to cap and you really want to get rid of them and there's a couple of people on the cart and you know if you if you landed that rocket a little bit better or if you stabbed that guy and didn't miss the stab perhaps you would have won the game for your team. But try not to be overcritical of yourself. I know if I'm treating myself poorly, I'm only going to play worse. Funny there, I actually saw the shadow of that spy. I um, didn't really anticipate in time, but there you go. So yeah, I got uber charged a little while back, and I killed some people with some crits, and it was fun. And then I died immediately to a sneaky heavy. And that guy was really good. I played with him a couple of games beforehand as well, and he's... He's just one of those good players who knows where to be in the right time in the right place. And that's another thing that's uh, important about Team Fortress, just knowing where to be at the right time. Sometimes that can just be lucky whether you're a spy and, oh, there's suddenly five backs for me to stab. How joyous. But yeah, this game is a lot about luck. I mean, there's going to be a lot of pyros that you're going to die to. Just ran at you with right click and you missed a few rockets and you, you kind of feel bad about it, but, you know, do doesn't matter. What on earth? Am I like your TF2 life coach? Don't worry, guys. It's just a video game. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh my goodness, I've ran out of things to say in this commentary. I hope I've given you some tips on how to play soldier or some things to keep a note of. Um, I'm sure there's some good players out there who are watching this and going, Wow, this guy is a total novice. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Anyway, so... Just to refresh your memory, um, on the best TF2 day video that I uploaded a couple of days ago, I mentioned that I'd play some piano accordion music for you guys if this video got 13 likes, and it did in fact get 13, it got a few more to be exact, which is really great to see, and I'm going to chuck on some accordion music right now for you guys. This is a, it's a Macedonian folk tune called Agusev Chocek. If you did in fact enjoy the accordion playing and you'd like to see more, give it a like and um, let's set a goal for 23 likes. If we get 23 likes, I'll post another one. So of course, thank you all for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed the gameplay and yeah, have a good one. Peace.